Let's talk about all of this with Sir Ian Duncan Smith. Uh, he's, of course, former leader of the Conservative Party and, of course, former Work and Pension Secretary under Cameron as well. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julie. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, uh, Jeremy Hunt um, uh, has said that Britain is proving the doubters wrong because beating those predictions, forecasts are always wrong, and largely forecasts that are a bit too pessimistic, but we're not going to go into a technical recession. Um, does that matter when people are still, whether there's a technical recession or not, really feeling the pinch right now? Yeah, a forecast, I mean, it was J.K. Galbraith that said that economic forecasts are only there to make uh, weather forecasters feel good about their lives. <laughs> uh, they're absolutely pointless, really, in a way. I don't know what they tell us. Every single one, pretty much, from the ABR is wrong. Uh, and uh, yet they're, they're delivered in, in, wrapped in cloth of gold, as if to say, somehow, that's where we're going. The honest truth is we don't really ever know how this will all pan out because it's such a complex economy. Uh, you know, you can't pull all the right levers. You just don't know. You'll have to see how this beds in. Uh, my overall view is there are, uh, you know, the old curate's egg uh, position, which is there are good things in here. Mm. But there's an overall question. The overall question is a taxation. And I suspect we're probably going to avoid recession, probably because migration uh, has been so high. But the question really is on GDP uh, per capita. Uh, that's the other question which you'll find uh, is lower. So yeah. the good bits, I think, of the economy are uh, this drive to get the UK to be able to invest more money in companies and startups without them having to go to America. And that's really where he's, uh, he's gone, particularly on medical areas where he's freeing up uh, the authorization of, of medical uh, science uh, products, etc., vaccines, making it much quicker. That's a good one because we left the EU and we can deregulate on that. And that will actually put us, if we play our cards right, at the heart of the medtech revolution globally. Uh, the pension stuff, quite interesting. I, uh, of course, Labour were bound to always attack it on the basis that uh, it, um, it is a, a tax cut for the rich. The reality is, though, that... Uh, what he's done to allow investment in companies much better, which will help growth, is that he's allowing pension funds to invest in a wider range of areas, such as medtech. Uh, and, yeah, but uh, he could do that without uh, giving a tax cut to the rich, couldn't he? Because it is, I'm sorry, this is a tax cut for the rich. Now, one could argue whether or not you should have any limit on a lifetime allowance of putting into pensions, but but at the end of the day, when times are very hard, and as we know, you know, six million people over the next five years being caught up in, in higher tax rates, even though they're on, you know, well, you know well, average jobs, is it, should we be helping the people who are going, oh no, I've got more than one million pounds in my pension fund? Well, I was just going to point out that, that this is the one area where he's reduced it. The rest, the tax burden, is higher. Yeah. Uh, and the problem is the thresholds. Uh, the thresholds are dragging more people into upper rate tax. Uh, the, I think the people on upper rate tax now will pay uh, certainly nearly 40, over 40 percent of total tax take. So it's a smaller number of people paying more tax than ever before. And the I think one of the problems we've got now is that the British economy, they're not alone, by the way, we are now uh, set in a difficult process, which is that we, we fiddle with things now where we give people bits and pieces. Yeah. Just say, there you are, we know what you're doing, whether it's childcare or whatever. We know how you should live your lives, here's the money. Meanwhile, overall spending has risen and risen and risen inexorably, particularly after COVID, and taxes are rising, and our ability, therefore, to be flexible and competitive gets less and less. Yeah. And that now makes us more and more dependent on the state than we've arguably been... Yeah. Well, that. and that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, I, I want to come on to that in relation to the free childcare issue, but just in terms of some of the other issues, and they say, we, we mentioned the, the pension lifetime allowance, it was expected to go up from around 1 million to 1.8 million, which is where it was originally under, when Osborne first became Chancellor, um, uh, but it's actually going to be completely abolished. That will affect 1.2 million people. The idea about that was actually, the reason this became an issue was really because of a load of highly paid NHS consultants and GPs who reached their limit, but they have the requirement under the NHS contract that they and the, and the NHS paying huge sums of money to their pensions it basically meant that they were being taxed at an absurd rate not worth their while going to work i don't blame them for that i don't see why people should work for free effectively or ridiculous tax rate um so they're, they're retiring earlier than we would want them to um could they not could the chancellor or the nhs could they not have just changed those nhs contracts that once you've reached this amount you don't have to we you know, neither side puts money in your pension uh, and then people can carry on working why did we have to have a tax cut for so many other people I mean, I'm all in favour of tax cuts. I'm just not sure that people who've got millions in their pension pots are my top priority right now when people can't afford to put the heating on. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a, the debates about individual taxation will rage. The, the, the reality for us at the moment, if we just move that group to one side, uh, the reality is that tax overall uh, is at the highest rate it's been. We are the, the tax take yeah. on the UK economy is at the highest rate it's been in pretty much my, well, not my whole life, but my adult mm. lifetime, pretty much. Uh, and the problem right now is that getting uh, economies like the UK out of this seemingly spiral cycle of higher taxes, higher interference, higher, uh, higher meddling by government is becoming really difficult to see the way out of this at this stage. You know, we, we did it under Thatcher, we got going, the British economy grew, it was uh, uh, entrepreneurism rage. Right now, we're, we're, we are in general danger of stifling that. I, d I don't think he can come out with a massively bold budget and no. cut it off in one go, but I think, I think the truth is right now we have to face the facts uh, that with growth levels forecast at the anemic levels they are, uh, that means essentially the UK economy, not, they're not alone in this, by the way, most of the European economies in much a similar position, and possibly America will be too, means we're going to bounce around, and that's when we're going to get these crises in banking, uh, etc., because the economies themselves aren't dynamic mm. in the sense that they are. Now, we have an opportunity to make ours more dynamic, uh, to boldly take these uh, areas of regulation post Brexit, where we cut the regulations, yeah. change the. But, but we seem to be going in the opposite direction. It sounds to me like you agree with Sir Keir Starmer. He stood up at the dispatch box after the Chancellor and said he said the spring budget dresses up stagnation as stability and that that is what it feels like I mean, the only really bit of good news other than oh we're not going to go into recession i thought was inflation the prediction of inflation to fall to 2.9 percent by the end of the year that will make a massive difference uh, to people's lives but let's let's also talk if we can about the business taxes big outcry from tory backbench mps uh, as we knew that was likely to happen and it did happen was uh, of course was the the corporation tax rise from 19 percent to 25 percent but there was this um, a, a sop, a very big sop to the backbenchers over capital expensing to be tax deductible in full, um, uh, and also big tax benefits for research uh, and, and development investment as well. Um, does that go some way to offset that to actually encourage businesses which are sitting on piles of cash right now, and some are, um, um, to actually go ahead and make that investment? Or is the problem that we've got a general election in a year's time, we don't know what's going to be the, the next budget, uh, and people can't make any long-term plans, whether they're personal life or their business life, because everything changes every few months. Yeah, I think one of the problems is the headline issue of corporation tax uh, isn't going to help uh, what we call the international companies choose to invest in the UK. We saw yeah. after the move to Ireland, uh, you know, we're competing with a country that has corporation tax at 12.5%. So, uh, you know, that is, is a huge change. The, the one point I would make, and I, I welcome the capital financing uh, through taxation, because uh, that will cut the level of actual corporation tax to companies that invest. But of course, those will tend to be the larger companies uh, who have the staff to be able to make the changes and understand yeah. how the system works. My problem with the smaller companies, and this is not a criticism of the budget, it's just this, this has been drifting in this direction for a long time. VAT for companies is at a ridiculous level of 80,000 registration uh, because it stifles small companies from growing. You won't move and take somebody else on because if that takes you over the VAT level, it's crushingly complicated uh, and lots of companies therefore will stay at turnover. Yeah. To, uh, and, and it puts their prices up by 20%, uh, as simple as that. I mean, we know there's a massive yeah. bunch of companies just underneath that threshold uh, who don't move on. Can I ask you, times against us, uh, talk about the childcare issue. Um, uh, free, free... It's not free. Someone's paying for it. Subsidised childcare for children from nine months upwards, uh, uh, and not just for the three and four-year-olds. Currently, get that for thirty hours a week. Um, even for people, I, we talked about this on the show yesterday. You know, even people on very high incomes, which I find extraordinary. Um, but um, a lot of people are saying this is exactly the wrong end of the problem. A, it won't come in in full until uh, 20, late twenty twenty-five. Um, but but also, it won't cover the full cost of that childcare. Um, and most nurseries right now ha can't find enough staff for the children who are in nursery um, and although even they're, they're changing the ratio of, of, of children uh, of staff to children uh, to match Scotland's um, actually getting enough staff to do the job and all the regulation is the problem rather than that and that's what's costing parents so much money is this the solution to a problem which has largely been created by the government 
Well, can I first of all say that I think that the Chancellor has had a difficult wicket to play on on this one anyway, so if we just mm. give, him a, give him a little bit... Uh, it would have been harder it, it would have been harder if he'd been in charge at any point during the last few years because he'd have had us in z net zero lockdowns the entire time. Sorry, zero, zero COVID lockdowns, wouldn't he? That's what he was in so favour of. In the economy, you know, he's, what we've seen is some good things in there, and but a, an overall position that means people will be paying more tax. Uh, the key position with childcare is the simple equation I constantly raise, which is we are drifting towards a sort of Scandinavian model that says we know what's best for your children. Yeah. Uh, and I worry about this because uh, we say that I, I'm, for those who, who who need to go to work, etc., and whatever, it, this is obviously going to be good news. I don't I don't want to pour any cold water on that at all. But what I do say is overall, what about the choice? Yeah. What about parents that may wish, for example? Uh, to stay at home for a period to look after their children because at the end of the day, we, you know, we all know that that form of childcare, all the figures show it, is simply the best kind of childcare for the early years. Uh, then in Ireland, where's the choice on that? Their taxes are very high if they choose to do that. Mm. Uh, we have the worst tax rate uh, for families, the uh, worst tax rate in the OECD for uh, couples that choose that one of them might stay at home for a period take some time, elongated time away from work to look after the kids, which will benefit their kids, we know. That, those figures show it. Instead of which, we'd rather than give that child over to... Yeah. Child it's, it's a very, it's a, that's a very big concern. And again, yeah. we know that most women don't want to go back, certainly full-time, do yeah. they, uh, after work, my babies. Um, lovely to talk to you. Great to get your analysis. We could talk to you for three hours. There's so much in the budget to talk about, but really appreciate your time, Sir Ian Duncan-Smith, our former leader of the Conservative Party.